Well, with me here in Sydney, I've got Sue Tomic, Director of Supply Chain Logistics Association. He'll be telling us a little bit more about the 60th Awards coming up on March the 18th at Crown Palladium in Melbourne. Sue, so lovely to meet you in person finally. Lovely to meet you too, Roger. Thank you for the opportunity. Pleasure. Now, Sue, how long have you been the director for? Ooh, since about late 2018, early 2019 with the Supply Chain Logistics Association. Um, what drew me to the association is the fact that it's probably one of the only uh, organisations in Australia that crosses all sectors of the supply chain. And yeah. I think that's very important uh, for an association to be able to bring different stakeholders together. Definitely. Now, so it has been a rough two years um, and mm. the 60th is quite a big achievement. What can we expect from these awards? Oh, look, besides everyone being incredibly excited about getting together with their industry associates, it is very special. Uh, the Supply Chain Logistics Association is one of the oldest associations to hold awards in Australia. And we've always believed that it's um, such a great opportunity to showcase what people are doing in the industry as far as innovation and what companies have done as far as projects to help the whole supply chain. Yeah, and so how has the industry been affected? over the last two years? Just how rough has it been for them? Look, the industry usually works under duress and stress uh, at the best of times, but the last two years with the labour shortages in particular and the disruption to, particularly in the Sydney and New South Wales area, mm. with the various lockdowns that we've had. I mean, Melbourne is also a, yeah. a um, has suffered worse than us. With the lockdowns that we've had, it's really constricted uh, businesses mm. who are situated who were situated in those LGAs of concern mm. last year, and also the labour force who predominantly live in those areas of lockdown and concern. So it's been a tough road mm. for the last few years. In saying that, the positive out of that is that supply chain and logistics has certainly been at the forefront as an essential service in Australia. Sure. and has really come into its own in the yeah. limelight as to how important and critical it is to the economy. And there's so much more respect for it now because of, unfortunately, because of the circumstances. Well, we all in the industry knew what miracles would perform week in, week out. Mm. Um, now the rest of Australia also knows how critical we are, which is, which is a good thing. Really, yeah, definitely. Now, Sue, the last um, awards were a virtual event. Um, they were. Now the 60th. How much planning has gone into this to actually make it happen? <laughs> well, due to lockdowns, we've actually had more time than what we really envis envisaged and probably wanted. Uh, so there's been a very active committee of about 15 to 20 members in Victoria planning for this event for the last two years because we did have to postpone it. Yeah. So we're all very excited to welcome the community of the Supply Chain Logistics Asso uh, the Association as well as the industry back under one roof to celebrate what will be a fantastic evening. Mm. Lovely. Um, what about the finalists? What can you tell us? Who, who can we expect? I mean, who, who was running? Who isn't running? Well, it's been, we hold all the nominations and the award winners, obviously, under the strictest confidence. It's almost like the Oscars, you know, with the accountants coming in with their little suitcases <laughs> as to who the winners Makes are. Makes it a lot more exciting. <laughs> <laughs> but we've had a range of finalists from small to medium businesses as well as the large businesses in the industry and the service providers, the mm. likes of Swiss Log and um, certain other very large industry players that have come to the fore and showcased really what they've done in the yeah. last couple of years as far as innovative practices and processes that will assist all sectors of the supply chain. Yeah. And so how do you attract um, new members and just that younger generation to the industry? And how do you make it sexy? <laughs> <laughs> well, the industry is very sexy, Ruja, in case you didn't notice. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Even sexier by the fact that it's in the media now. So we've always had a future leaders program mm. and we've always been fortunate that our membership base crosses all generations. Yeah. So we're a really diverse organisation. We have a lot of affiliations with universities, uh, so attracting that young contingent yeah. is very important to us because they are the future leaders of the industry, future yeah. management if you like, and they'll be the innovators going forward. Definitely. Now, has that number gone up at all? Um, have the memberships increased over the last two years? Surprisingly, yes. Uh, I, was, I was treasurer before I became chair of the association and my biggest fear was being an association that is event-based predominantly, 
that with lockdowns we wouldn't be able to hold the events and hold the interest of our membership base. Yeah. But we found we've grown exponentially with both our corporate partnerships mm. as well as individuals. And the feedback from our membership base is I think the more people work from home and the more isolated they were, the more connected they wanted to become. Yeah. So we've seen exponential growth across all of our membership categories, which has been great. It's been great for the association and great for them and the industry. Well, it'll be definitely nice seeing them being connected on the 9th and the 18th for a bit of a party and a drink and just celebrating the, the industry itself. What else can we expect from the actual night itself? Well, besides showcasing innovation, obviously there'll be a lot of uh, Victorian stakeholders present on the night. So Port of Melbourne are attending, a lot of shipping lines are attending. And that cross-sector representation, I think, is very important to the supply chain and the evening itself. It always helps to bring different stakeholders from different sectors together uh, because it is actually a chain. And if one area of that, of the industry, is struggling, yeah. it really affects as a flow on effect to all the other sectors of the industry as well. So to be able to listen to our keynote speakers and also just celebrate and showcase innovation, it'll be a fantastic event. Now we just have to find an outfit, so have you got an outfit? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I have, but you know, like most risk mitigation, I have to have a contingency. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Now, Sue, on the 18th of March, what can we expect from the night? Besides showcasing innovation and obviously celebrating all of our winners and finalists on the evening, I'm also excited to have Import Export TV there as our paparazzi. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and interviewing the winners and the various person, people that are there on the night. I think that'll be very special and it's not something I think that has been done at any other awards evening. Mm. So thank you very much to Import Export TV for doing that. Our pleasure, Suna. Thank you for the opportunity. And as said previously, we do look forward to the 18th of March and to celebrating the industry and um, bringing all the live coverage and special reports from the evening itself. So we do look forward to it.